If God hates evil and he's got the power to do something about it, why doesn't he? Hey, I'm Dylan, and you're listening to Unlocked, your daily key to unlocking God's word in your life. Do you ever feel like God really must not care about the bad things that happen all the time? I mean, if he's all powerful and completely moral and good and perfect, then why doesn't he stop the bad stuff from happening? Well, there's actually a ton of stuff that goes into the answers for those questions, but today's story deals with at least one part of it. God does care and he grieves that it's happening. We see that in today's devotion, The Book of Nahum, Evil Empires and Innocent Blood by Naomi Zylstra. Sometimes I see all the bad in the world and I start to feel hopeless. With things like war and cancer in the world, does God even care? Well, the short book of Nahum in the Bible is a collection of poems that shows how God does address evil and does care about the bad things happening in the world. In it, the prophet Nahum tells about the coming downfall of one of Israel's enemy nations, Assyria. The Assyrians captured and ransacked Israel in 721 BC. Eventually, the nation of Babylon would topple the Assyrians, including their capital city of Nineveh. The imagery of the fall of Nineveh in the book of Nahum is vivid and gruesome. The book talks about the city being cut down with the sword and people stumbling over the corpses. God's righteous judgment is coming down because the city and the empire itself was built on the blood of the innocent. The book then contrasts the evil empire and the judgment they will face with the mercy God will show to his faithful remnant in Israel. Nahum 1.6 talks about how God's wrath is pouring out like fire against the evil nation. And in Nahum 1.7, the very next verse, it talks about how God is a refuge to his faithful people who have humbled themselves before God. For the prophet Nahum, the fall of the Assyrians allude to how God will someday bring justice to all evil empires of the world. We are familiar with evil and oppression in today's world. We see it all the time. The book of Nahum shows that God does not ignore this evil. He grieves it and he promises to bring judgment and restoration to the whole world one day. We have already seen this restoration in part through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But we also look forward to the day Jesus will return to earth and our loving God will destroy all injustice and restore creation under his perfectly just reign. So what are some questions you've got? Have you ever felt overwhelmed by the evil and suffering in the world? You can bring these feelings to Jesus in prayer anytime, and you can ask him to show you how you can participate in the good work of his perfectly just kingdom here and now. Read more about that in Isaiah 117, Micah 6, 8, and Mark 12, 29 through 31. Have you seen a piece of restoration and justice that previews the restoration to come? What was it like? If not, you can ask Jesus to help you catch glimpses of the good work he's doing anytime. Now, as you and I can read in Nahum 1.7, The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. And I'd encourage you to dig a little bit deeper and read a bunch out of the book of Nahum at chapters 1, 1 through 7, chapter 2, 1 through 10, chapter 3, 1 through 4, and verses 18 through 19, and from the New Testament, Acts 17 verses 24 through 31 to keep God's word alive in your life. Unlocked is a resource of Keys for Kids Ministries. How do you feel about waiting, especially when you're waiting for something wrong to be put right? Nobody really loves it. That's why we'll be talking about finding God in the waiting on our Instagram. Search for at Unlocked Devo. And come back for tomorrow's devotion with Natalie, another kind of waiting, waiting for Easter. But until then, I'm Dylan, encouraging you to live life unlocked, opening the door to God in your life.